I think in some ways being an ally is a bit of an aspirational state, right? It's something that we continue to strive towards and that as individuals we can um, take personal responsibility for you know, checking our own assumptions and continuing to reflect and to educate ourselves. But the thing I would sort of advise students is, as they are in Sheridan, is to have more of a sense of curiosity to what we have on campus and how they can better inform themselves of, of the Indigenous culture. And, uh, because it's there, but they, they have to do their own due diligence of getting out there and learning. And I think, aside from you know, the Sheridan community, but once they get out into the, the broader communities, learning what resources are there or what Indigenous communities are there and how can they be a part of and learn from, from the neighbours. Informing oneself, not only sort of about the historical pieces, but about how they can themselves, as a peer, contribute to, for instance, um, working towards achieving um, whether those are the recommendations, as outlined in the Truth and, and Reconciliation pieces, um, but actively seeing themselves as part of the solution? Um, I think that it's important for our students um, to understand our colonial legacy here in Canada around citizenship and recognizing that we're in a pluralistic society, but there are First Nations here um, in this country and an understanding that there's a legacy around that colonial past. To become an ally, you have to be able to shift your perspective and see the world through the lens of our Indigenous peoples. They've been through so much. And when you sh put yourself in that space to think, how would I feel if I had my child taken away from me, or if I were taken away from my family, my community, my way of knowing? What would happen if my lands <laughs> were taken away from me, my way of knowing? If someone said, thy whole value system and way of being and everything I'd been taught was wrong, did not matter, was just not up to par. How would that affect me and my sense of self, my sense of well-being, and how would that affect the next generation and the next generations and seven generations forward? And so I think that it's, it's being open to having an understanding that the history that we might be aware of is not the true history of our country. So they have to be open to understanding that there is a lot of things we don't know yet and we will never perhaps understand everything. So listen to the stories of residential school survivors and, um, and take in um, and learn uh, and do ask questions as well. We're not all perfect and we don't all have um, detailed versions of knowledge that are just embedded in us. It's a part of the learning um, in terms of asking questions as well and digging deeper. Uh, reading, watching documentaries, uh, things that were recommended by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission are certainly good places to start. And uh, we live in a global society. Uh, it's completely, it's very, very diverse. And it's critical that people meet with each other, talk to each other, work together. Uh, we can all learn from each other. It's about learning through lived experiences of your classmates and your faculty and the people that you are around um, and advancing some of that as you move forward. I think that the beauty of this country uh, and the, the ways in which we can uh, maybe advance some of the challenges that we all have as a society is all around that. So I think it's about making a commitment to being open, to learning, and to sharing. When we do our best work, students leave a college or university environment um, as better citizens. And so I think part of that is recognizing and acknowledging that being a citizen, an active, engaged citizen in our democracy in Canada, uh, necessitates an understanding and a consciousness around truth and reconciliation. So the first thing is every student, every learner, every faculty member, every staff um, uh, should read uh, the Truth and Reconciliation uh, calls to action. That's foundational reading and people need to be at least modestly conversant in what the message is. Every learner should take the time to invest in that because that's what it means to be an active, engaged citizen in Canada right now. So what I would say to our students who have graduated, I would say you are our future. Your decisions, your choices will make a difference. Together, we can make a difference. 
and affect change. You're a graduate of Sheridan. Be proud, but be proud to show the character of what is Sheridan. Be kind, be respectful of one another, and celebrate diversity. It's not that every single person can do everything, but every little bit helps, right? It's a cumulative kind of effect. And if you're helping out within the boundaries of your personal community, if you're helping out or contributing, working with Indigenous communities in the context of your professional practice, whatever that may be, but just to be aware that uh, this is an essential part of what makes all of us, I think, better citizens of Canada. And um, it becomes a really great opportunity to sort of bridge out to the community in terms of these students then becoming the ambassadors in terms of their own experiences. You know, it sort of transcends just ability and that, you know, I think we can send many allies out in the world if we set them up for success and if we share truth and if we share story and if we create a safe space for them to do so. I think important truth that all of our students should have and be leaving our institution with and that is that, you know, the idea that we're all treaty people um, and this is something that I think we are, you know, as people who are settlers, are, are um, and we need to sort of shift our mindset a bit. Um, you know, we're all here by virtue of the treaties, modern and historic, and we all benefit from the treaties as well. Educate yourself, read Indigenous stories, listen to Indigenous stories, go out into the community, meet Indigenous people, understand what treaty you are living under as a person. I think it's the same thing that students need to really, they, they need to listen, they need to be open. And being an ally involves, um, first and foremost, having a heart and, you know, alliance comes from the heart. And so my advice to students is to be real and to be authentic and you will be effective allies, especially um, if you do it not because you think you have to, but because you mean it. The best thing you can always do is just begin a conversation with somebody from that community, which we do with anybody we meet in terms of who are they? Where do they come from? What is their history? What is their family? What is their culture? And to begin to open that dialogue and, and take a risk as, as you take a risk in, you know, any situation where you're communicating with a stranger, let's say. Well, I think, you know, students, while we have them here at Sheridan, if we are um, presenting the dialogues in a healthy way and they're seeing it and it's a part of a holistic approach to their experience here on campus as well as their education in the classroom. Um, I think that um, allies as they graduate and go into the world, they're comfortable with this and the dialogue has started in that there is a, an awareness. The awareness needs to take a step further and what I would encourage our learners uh, to do is to not only be aware but to uh, act on that awareness to find ways to contribute to a positive outcome when we are faced with a challenge. They need to ask themselves, as we all do, where do they see themselves as individuals in understanding healing, growth, and the future of Canada? So I say to our students, immerse yourself in personal ways to connect to the lived experience. And I think for me what that says is remember, one simple thoughtful action can have a significant and resounding impact. So be that person, be that person that does one small kernel of something and make a difference.